all right guys before we start this video i wanted to quickly mention that we just stocked up on this logo t black on black and it is reflective so go ahead and check out fadedculture.co to get you one thank you first all the america yeah it's a big day today the good news is the last person to cut my hair botched the shit oh there's bad news give me his address i'll take care of him I'm Faded Culture, I'm Adrian Barone, and we're back with another haircut tutorial. Today we're gonna be breaking down the steps on how to do a very simple gentleman's haircut. We're gonna do finger length on top and a one on the sides. I hope y'all enjoy this tutorial and let's jump right into it. Thank you, killed it. Dude, man, I'll tell you, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty damn good. <laughs> All right, guys, again, thank y'all so much for tuning in to another tutorial. We got a simple gentleman's haircut today for y'all. I hope y'all can take away some new tips from this, and let's jump right into it. As usual, we're going to start by combing the hair in the direction that it naturally lays. Make sure that you are combing according to the cowlicks. And we're going to start by damping the hair slightly on top to begin our shear work. And the first tip I have for y'all is to use the fine side of the comb as I feel as it grabs more of the hair. We're going to begin with our front section and again this is finger length so I do have one finger from the scalp and that's where I'm going to begin. Combing for my neck section then tucking the comb away on the opposite hand. I usually grab a portion of the previously cut section alongside with the new section but since this is finger length that's all that matters is keeping that one finger length from the scalp and just go ahead using small sections working my way back and it's always best to work in smaller sections when you're working your way back that way when you come back and cross check your work vertically it's not as much that you have to correct and do take notice in the way I'm holding the shears as this is a very neutral position for the wrist it's just for the longevity and health of the wrist so if you do happen to do a lot of shear work in the barber shop I suggest you try this position And then to begin connecting the top to the sides, I'm going to start from the, the front corner. And as you can see, my fingers are in a vertical position. I'm, they're more upright. And then I'm going to begin to cut away and just grabbing small sections, working my way along the sides. And again, this is just going to help start connecting the top to the sides. Now I'm going to cross check my work as I mentioned coming in vertical sections. And all the steps to this tutorial guys will be in the description down below in case y'all want to follow along that way. Now using our number one guard lever completely closed, we're gonna put in our first guideline. We're gonna start at that temple peak area and then work our way evenly back. Make sure you're easy with your strokes and keep a comb or a small brush on your opposite hand to then clean the surface after every few strokes. Make sure you are using your opposite hand to then pull the ear down. Last thing you want is for his ear to get caught in that clipper. The softer you are with these initial guidelines though, the easier it is going to be when you come back down and start erasing them. So just keep that in mind guys. You can see right here how I'm slightly scooping now as I approach the guideline. Make sure that you do end up at that same temple peak area on the opposite side. You could always view him from the front to make sure that they align. Now for our second guideline, we're going to keep the same clip and just open the lever completely. 
and we're going to take that up about an inch or so. As you can see, I set it in, I recomb the hair and repeat that area. Make sure that your guidelines are parallel to the ones underneath, that way your fade is even throughout. As you can see by being easy on the wrist, it looks like that one blended right into that one and a half, but we're still going to come back and touch it up. For our second guideline, we're going to use our number two guard, lever completely open still, and follow that same process. Take that up about an inch or so. Just be very mindful that you are running, running it parallel to the one underneath. And let the clipper all the work guys there's no need to apply so much pressure with your hands or really dig the clipper in now for our last guard it will be the number three and we're still going to keep that lever completely open as you can see my strokes are basically scooping out of the head coming right up and this will be the last guard that i will be using Now to finish connecting to the top, there is a little bit of weight left right here on the parietal ridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and do thinning shears over comb technique. And once I'm done setting up all my guidelines, I always come back and freehand the rest of the frizz. As you can see, I'm using my pinky as a support against the head. And this is just to give the head a better shape. By now, you should have that first guideline that we created with the one, which is very spawn faint. And the second guideline that we created with the one lever completely open. We're going to start with that one and work our way down. By using our one and a half guard, I'm going to close the lever just slightly, putting it into a three-fourths position. It's basically somewhere between halfway and fully open. Using mainly the corners of the clipper, we're going to start attacking that top guideline. And if for whatever reason this step is creating a faint line right above it, do not be scared. To open the lever completely and just finish cleaning that out. For the second guideline coming down, I'm going to point it out more towards the back. It's right here. I'm going to use the number one guard lever still in that three-fourths position. And as you can see, it was very faint on the sides. It was more noticeable towards the back, but I still go over the sides just because details do matter, guys. As you can see, I got a little bit of dark spots left, mainly towards the back. I'm going to go ahead and use my number one guard lever completely open now and just do any touch-up work that I need. Using mainly just the last two, three teeth of the clipper just to really dig in and fine-tune those details. And as for the neckline, he prefers a very natural look. So I'm just going to do a very, very soft taper. Since he got a number one on the sides, I'm going to just go one size down and do a half and taper out the neckline and the sideburns. And to remove that half line, I'm going to use my half card and put that lever in that three-fourths position that I spoke of earlier. And the reason I only go one size down is basically because I do want to keep it as natural as possible, but I do want to take it a little shorter as the hair does tend to grow out a lot faster towards the sideburns and that neckline area. Repeat the same thing for the sideburns, starting with the lever fully open and then slap on that half guard, three-fourths, and finish blending it out. Now when I do 
start the neckline, I always like to put their head in a neutral position, not so much facing down. Reason being is their neckline could change depending on their head position. Doing a soft square towards the back and cleaning out around the ears. Finish connecting that now moving from the front back. And as for the sideburns, about I go slightly above mid ear. Now this is all preference, so according to your client, just make sure you consult with them. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. And before I do my razor work, I do like to go over it first with my electric shaver, just so I don't have to worry about my blade dually now mid-shave. Now applying some shave gel. And another tip I do have for y'all is here I'm applying the shave gel first and right after I do spray a little bit of water on my hands and just kind of run down the areas that I applied the shave gel with a little bit of water. It just keeps the moisture in the, in the hair better. Starting by shaving with the grain and then follow that by shaving against the grain. Make sure that you are using your opposite hand to help stretch the skin to ensure a softer, smoother shave. Here I'm going to use a little bit of matte pomade. Make sure you really emulsify it to where it almost disappears in your hands. That way you don't have clumps of product on their hair. And I'm going to just swipe and run it through the top and the sides. It does give it a little bit of texture even though the hair is short on top. Now here's the before guys in case y'all forgot. And here's the after. A one on the sides with finger length on top. I really do hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial guys. I hope y'all learned something new. Let us know down in the comments below what y'all would like for us to do next. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And all the tools that we used in this video are in the description down below. Feel free to check it out. And we do got the Faded Culture Barber Capes in stock at FadedCulture.co. Thank y'all so much for the support and those who have been buying our merch guys. Till next time, peace.